Hi everyone, in this video we will take a look at the new features that have been added to Naviate Rebar 2024. Before we take a look at these new features, it's important to understand that everything we've developed in Naviate Rebar 2024 will also be back developed for 2023. This is important as it gives you maximum flexibility when working on older versions of Revit. So Naviate Rebar was first released this time last year and a lot has happened to the product since. We've had several new additions such as foundation reinforcement, openings as well as the lapping of a reinforcement bar. Of course Naviate Rebar is our latest reinforcement generation product that replaces the older Naviate Rebar extension. The new framework has been built from the ground up with technology that integrates with the newer Revit Rebar tools such as Rebar constraints and the propagation of Rebar. Let's now take a look at some of this new technology. I'll begin by switching to the 3D Rebar tab. And in here we can see that we have a number of columns over here that currently don't have any reinforcement applied. So we'll begin by selecting our column reinforcement tool and we'll select one of these columns. So here we can now see the column reinforcement dialog box. Now as we've said, everything is modeless, so I can continue to work in the background of Revit whilst this dialog box is open. In this example here, we're going to place named settings. So here I've already pre-configured a setting called C2. Let's go ahead and apply that to the column. We can now see the reinforcement has been placed. I'll now close down the column reinforcement dialog box and what we'll do here is we'll show this reinforcement unobscured. Now what I want to do now is actually apply that to the remainder of the columns across here. Now I'd have two ways to do that. I could select all three columns and apply the name setting again or I could use Autodesk's propagate rebar tool. So let's go ahead and use that. So we'll select the context tab at the top here and we'll use propagate rebar. In this example, we want to actually have the rebar aligned by host, and here I'm just going to make a simple crossing window selection across all of these columns, and now finish that propagation. We can now clearly see that all the rebar has been propagated. Now normally, if you did this without Naviate Rebar, you'd have to manually edit the rebar on all of these columns if something changes. However, with Naviate Rebar, we can simply edit one of these name settings and it will update all of the columns that have that name setting applied. So let's take a look at this. So we'll go back to the column reinforcement tool and we'll select one of the columns. Here, you can see that I've got my name setting, C2. Now, if that was wrong, I could read the settings from the column, like so, and it would now bring back that current name setting. Let's now make a change to the configuration. So if we look down at the stirrup distribution here, we can see that we've got 25% of the column actually being reinforced with a spacing of 150. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to go to length now. And here I'm going to specify 2,500 millimeters and I'll change the spacing to 100. All I now need to do is actually save this name setting. And you can see here Naviate Rebar has detected that there are six elements with that name setting. I'll just go ahead and say yes. Again, on the rebar tab, we can ask Naviate to show us all the rebar unobscured. And now we can see that change has now been propagated to all of those columns with that name setting. So obviously that's much, much better than the standard Revit rebar propagation tool. Okay, let's close down the column reinforcement dialog box. And what we'll do now is we'll actually look at placing out some foundation reinforcement. Now you can see here I've already got some reinforcement applied. Now also with all of our Naviate Rebar tools, we can select an element and then we can delete all the reinforcement that was applied to that. So here, we're now going to use one of our new tools for foundation reinforcement. So I'll select foundation. I'll select the foundation itself in here. And here we can see that we have the dialog box open. Now, I would have the ability to reinforce the top cage and the bottom cage if I want to. In this case, I just want a bottom cage. We can see that we can actually form a shape out of two L bars, or we can just have a continuous shape in here. With all of our Naviate Rebar technology, the shape codes are simply loaded from your template. So all of the shape codes are already loaded in here, so I've got access to all of those. Again, that's the same with the bar type, so currently I'm using a H20, but if you had American grades or other country grades, they would obviously appear within this dialog box. Now here you can see that I've got the same name setting, both for the longitudinal and the transversal bars, and we'll simply go ahead and apply this reinforcement. 
Now with the dialog box still open, I can just make some quick tweaks and changes here. Now this is just standard reinforcement in Revit, so I can just use the shape handles here to reposition the rebar so it doesn't actually clash with the, uh, the bend in there. So let's just do that. Okay, and I'll do a very similar thing for the bottom layer of rebar. So I'm just using the shape handle in here. But again, we could do this with rebar constraints if we preferred. And there's the uh, edits made. Now again here, we can see that we've got some connecting bars going up from the foundation into the column. Again here, I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to show you how Navigate can actually add connections between these elements. And this is quite significant because a lot of the effort that we put in here is with connecting elements between these components. So in this case here, you can see that we've got our connection tool. First thing we do here is we actually pick a face and then we pick the host. In this case, that will be my foundation. You can now see in our connection reinforcement dialog, we have several connection types that we can apply. So here I've got L bars, but also I can actually have opposing L bars if I wanted to, U bars, straight bars, perhaps to connect beams or columns together, and of course a wall corner join. In this case here, we just want some L bars. So let's go ahead and start to configure the dialog box here. So we can see first up here, we need to actually set our B dimension. So that's actually the leg of the reinforcement. So I'm going to set that to uh, 550 in here. The S dimension is the distance between the bars. Now, you know, if you didn't know this, you could actually come in and just directly measure. And this is one of the re really big benefits of having modeless dialogues. We can just go ahead and actually measure something up there. So what I need to do is obviously take into account um, that I want these L bars inside of these main reinforcement bars. So we'll go and change our S dimension to uh, 313 in this case here. We can also see that we can actually set the lap. So that's obviously from the top of the element up to the end of the rebar, or we can set the overall length of the bar. So a thousand's fine. And again here, I've got my bar type of H20, my shape code 11, and I can control the number of bars that need to be placed out, or in fact the spacing. So here, we're just going to run with uh, two bars on each side. Of course, I could save this as a name setting as well if I wanted to, so let's do that. So here, we'll say foundation to column. We'll click OK. Of course, another thing we do need to set is our CO value. This is basically the offset from cover. Now here, you can see that these L bars really want to be in the third layer. Of course, I could manually calculate that, or I can just click on this little selection button here. I can select my um, top player, and you can see now the CA value is automatically recovered from the model. So we can then go ahead and apply this, and I can now see my connection bars in. Again, if I want to see these unobscured, I can just ask Navigate to show them unobscured, and there's my connecting reinforcement. So a massive benefit here, rather than having to model all of these things manually. So other functionality that we have here is reinforcement for openings. So let's just take a look into the core area over here. And we can see here that we actually have some uh, structural openings. And you can see all the reinforcement bar has been trimmed out around all of those openings. Now this is in fact a door, but it could be just a standard structural opening or a window or anything like that. And our Navigate Rebar product actually supports multiple categories. So let's go ahead and look at the section here, and we can now see that all of the reinforcement has been applied quite nicely. Now, how does the dialog box look? Well, if we select the opening, you can see on our context ribbon, we can go up and ask Navigate to generate reinforcement for this. And of course here, we can actually see the dialog box and how we would go about adding all that reinforcement in. Very similar look and feel to all of our tools within Navigate. And of course, we can actually save this name setting. Another key thing here to understand is that constraints are automatically placed for all of our reinforcement in the product. So this is great if we have geometry changes. Okay, let's switch back into the 3D view. And now we'll actually look at some more reinforcement over here with another function, which is wall reinforcement. So we'll go ahead and select the wall command and we'll select our wall. So again in here, we can actually see the dialog box is currently open. So again, I'm going to have my vertical bars fixed first and then my horizontal bars second. We can configure the bar type in here, uh, both for the vertical and horizontal bars and spacings, of course. In here, you can see that I'm uh, deciding to actually close the wall with uh, U bars in here, but equally I, I could have extended bars in here to actually connect with the wall above perhaps, or I could actually have extra dowels added in if I wanted to. And again, I've got exactly the same configuration for the left-hand side of the wall and the right-hand side of the wall. 
So let's go ahead and apply that reinforcement as it stands at the minute. Once again, we'll go into our rebar tab and we'll show obscured and we can now see all that reinforcement nicely placed. Now, you can see here that I've actually got a wall foundation in here as well. That's obviously going to need reinforcing. So again, we can go ahead and use our foundation tool. So we'll select this wall foundation now and we can see we've got the same dialog open. In this example, we'll need to configure this. So again, we just want bottom bars, but now they don't all want to be the same. So here, I'm gonna set my longitudinal bars first. So these are gonna be straight bars, H20s, and here, I just want them to be shape code 00. I'm quite happy with the spacing of 200 millimeters. And then I'll select the transversal bars in here. So again, this is gonna be in one piece, but if it was a really big foundation, I could actually have two separate L bars. The bar type will remain at H20. Uh, the shape code will be 21. And here, again, we'll just have the 250 spacing now, so it ties in with the wall. And we'll go ahead and apply all of that reinforcement. Straight away here, we can see that Navier has now added all that rebar in. Again, I can make some tweaks and changes here. So what I'm gonna do is just actually uh, reduce the spacing on this bar so it's not actually sitting outside of the, uh, the bend in there. And there we are, there's all of our reinforcement. Now finally in here, we're actually adding connecting reinforcement basically from this foundation here up to the wall. So again, I can go into my connection tool. I can pick the underside of the wall and the host in this case here. Um, we probably won't be able to fit um, L bars in here. So we'll actually have opposing L bars in this example now. Again, you can see that we've got our S dimension in here and our B dimension and so on. So once again here, I can go to the measure tool and we'll just take a measurement across these two bars inside here. I can see I've got 248. Okay, so we'll get that actually configured in here. So that's gonna be 248 in there. Okay, um, we can see the B dimension is 550. Um, I'll go with that and we can obviously always go back and change that if we want to. Again, we've got our bar type of H20s in this case. L bars are configured, which is probably what we want. Again here, we can go back and actually have uh, 250 millimeters between each of the elements. And again here, I've got a lap of 1000 from the top of the foundation up to the, the, uh, the wall. Okay, we've also got the CA value again, so let's go ahead and select that. This time, we're actually gonna, act we're actually gonna sit them on the uh, top of these uh, bottom bars here, so we'll select that. And we'll go ahead and now apply all of that reinforcement. And again, you can see Naviate's made a great job of actually placing in that connecting reinforcement. Now, just looking into the wall here, we can see that if I pick one of these straight bars in here, um, straight away here, I've actually got um, nearly 17 meters of rebar. Now, just to show you what we can do here, which is quite nice, if I go back into my wall reinforcement, what I actually wanna now do is produce a lap as well. And here, I can actually open up divide rebar. Now, these tools can all be used concurrently Looking at our new divide rebar dialog, I can see I can actually set a maximum stock length, or in fact here I could actually split them into two equal segments if I wanted to. Um, I wanna split these into stock bars, so I'm gonna use 10 meters for my stock. I can actually have all the laps in a single plane, or I can stagger the laps like this setting here. I've got 45 uh, times diameter in here, and I'm having 450 st um, stagger over here. So then we'll use pick and divide. Now what this does is it allows me to decide what end I start the lap from. So I've selected here and we can now see that stagger applied. We'll go over this side now and we'll do a very similar thing to the back uh, reinforcement over here. And now let's take a look at this. So we'll go back over here. We'll select these bars. I can see these are 10 meters. So that's gonna be shape code one inside there. Okay, let's go to the back end of the reinforcement over here. Pick on this, I can see that's my 10 meter now. So that wants to be shape code one. Okay, and there it is. Now, of course, in here, we actually will need to offset these bars to be completely accurate. So again, we can just use the little shape panels in here. We can use constraints, but actually I'll leave this as it is. And we can now see we've got that nice staggered lap going on there. So what's really cool here is we can actually use that in the same command. Now, even though the wall dialog box is now open and divide rebar, I can go directly back in here and I can say, right, well, what I wanna do is I now want to actually split these bottom bars as well. So I can pick and divide, pick on the bottom bars. Okay, and we can now see we have a division in there as well. 
Now, another thing we could do here is we could actually add couplers into this instead. So I'm just going to uh, undo that. I'll go back to our divide rebar tool again. And this time, what I'm going to do is break it down into stock lengths, but I don't want to lap the bars this time. So we'll do pick and divide. Okay. And now let's see what's happened. So we can see that the bars have actually been split, but currently there's actually no lap between them. So we can pick both of the bars here. We can then go to the structure tab and you'll see here we can actually couple the reinforcement together. So here I want to place it between two bars. So these are 20s, so I can select my relevant coupler, select the uh, two bars in there and we can now see that we actually now have all of those rebars nicely coupled together as well. And again we can actually show these unobscured and we can now see we have all of our rebar and the coupler. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview of some of the new features that we've added to Revit 2024. Now, like I've said, these are also available in our 2023 version as well. Got some exciting new features coming up next year. Um, check out my blog if you want to. A link's in the uh, description of the video below, and you can actually see some of the things that we'll be looking at for next year. Okay, speak to you all soon, and have a great new year.